In ancient military clashes, Light Cavalry was always one of the most effective units in war. With their ability to quickly storm enemies on horseback, inflict massive damage, and evade capture, they were certainly a force to be reckoned with. When you think of historical Light Cavalry troops, you may first think of the Mongols, as they famously conquered Asia during the 13th century on horseback. But in the time of antiquity, it was the North Africans who would stun the world with their novel military strategies. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, and join us in looking at the tactics of the fearsome Numidian cavalry, also known as the best horsemen of Africa. In Northern Africa, Numidia was an ancient Libyan kingdom, west of Carthage and what we know today as part of the area of Tunisia and Algeria. The Numidians ranged between a nomadic and semi-nomadic lifestyle. They settled in tribes, and each tribe had a chief who had advisors and a corresponding general assembly. Between these tribes, much intertribal warfare occurred. But, as history dictates, kings arose and united these tribes, and three dominant kingdoms in Numidia emerged. From these civil warfares, Numidian cavalry would evolve to become one of the most effective and disciplined fighting forces of the ancient world. This, in turn, would lead to their demand as mercenaries hired by the great empires of their time. One good example of this was with Carthage. Although the Carthaginian-Numidian relationship was strained at the start, as they were a Phoenician colony, with the Roman expansion underway, they agreed to fight by their side, in the Punic Wars to be specific. The Punic Wars were a series of three wars that lasted more than 100 years. It was mainly between the states of Rome and Carthage, but their allies were involved as well. These are also called the Carthaginian Wars. These wars would develop due to both states' wishes for regional expansion across North Africa, the Mediterranean, and Northern Europe. During this time, Rome was just an emerging power in the Mediterranean, while Carthage had ruled over most of North Africa and parts of Europe, with the Numidian cavalry by their side for some time. The first encounter between these expanding strongholds would be on the island of Sicily in 264 BCE. This would be the longest naval war of antiquity, as it lasted for a staggering 23 years. However, Carthage lost in the end due to the novel techniques used by the Roman naval fleet, and at the end of the First Punic War, a peace treaty was agreed on by both states, with both empires suffering heavy losses to the losses. But why would there be three wars if there was a peace treaty already? It all started with the island of Sardinia. Initially, Sardinia was conquered by Carthage around 600 BCE, but in 237 BCE, the inhabitants of Sardinia had an uprising and drove out the Carthaginian garrison. These inhabitants appealed for some Roman assistance. The Romans initially declined, but three years later, they agreed and decided to seize not just Sardinia, but also Corsica, which was essential for their expansion plans, but was against the terms of their peace treaty with Carthage. In the end, all Carthaginians in Sardinia were slaughtered, and Rome occupied both the islands of Sardinia and Corsica, which led to the Second Punic War in 218 BCE. It is during this war where the Numidian cavalry would make their mark in history. The Second Punic War lasted for 17 years and was mainly fought for supremacy of the Mediterranean. Now, there were notably huge losses during this war on both sides due to the series of battles that occurred. However, the armies that rose to the top and shocked the Romans were actually the extended arm of the Carthaginian army particularly the Numidian cavalry under the Carthaginian general, Hannibal Barca. Not much was written about their recruitment into this cavalry unit, aside from the fact that they came from various tiers of society. As for their equipment, the key to the light cavalry were their horses. The horses were bred small, which in turn made them move more quickly and nimbly. These warriors rode into battle without a saddle, which must have been quite uncomfortable. To control their horses, they relied on a small rope around their mount. As for their defenses, both the horses and the soldier had very little armor. The soldier's main defense was a small, round, leather-covered shield, and since these soldiers funded their own equipment, a basic soldier would mostly just wear a simple tunic, while wealthier riders would be able to sport at least a breastplate or a helmet. As for offense, their main equipment was a javelin and possibly a short sword or blade. Moving on to their battle tactics, they were often typical of most light cavalry, scouting and reconnaissance. But the Numidians were also used in harassing the enemies, such as in lightning raids and small attacks to vital supply lines. They needed to act quickly, cause as much damage as they could, and slip away, like a hit and run. When they engaged in battle, they would act like a flock of birds, in a fluid and loose order. They would charge as though they had no control, and the opposing side would angrily charge out to meet them. However, the Numidian cavalry would mount a fake retreat. 
This was a trick that would entice their pursuers to break formation, allowing the cavalry to attack once they were dispersed. This tactic was very effective and allowed them to act swiftly between their opponents with javelins slashing whoever they came across. But they were not just mercenaries hired by the Carthaginian army to harass supply lines. They were also essential in battle, even close combat battle. Since they cannot really participate in battle with those heavily clad in armor and swords, the light cavalry would aid their comrades by attacking from the flanks. On horseback, they would throw their spears at the rear of their opponents while their comrades engaged in close combat. But even during these attacks, they would retreat and prepare to harass the Romans or the opponents anew. This is basically how they reduced losses, and it was an effective strategy. In fact, in the Battle of Cannae that happened in 216 BCE, an execution of one of the greatest tactical feats in military history occurred. Carthage had around 50,000 men with around 8,000 light cavalry, while Rome had around 84,000 men with no light cavalry. From numbers alone, you would have suspected that Rome won, but strength did not lie in numbers in this case, as the Romans suffered a staggering loss of 67,000 people, either killed or captured. This was massive compared to the 6,000 or so that Carthage lost. The Roman army was effectively baited into a massive trap and completely destroyed by flanking techniques, including by the Numidian cavalry. This crushed Roman morale and made the Carthaginians more confident in war, which would eventually backfire, but that's for later on in the video. In early warfare, Men on horseback were noted to be ruthless and undisciplined, but this army was nothing like that. Yes, they were chaotic when engaging in battle, but they were able to follow commands and were disciplined. Why? Because of their extensive history of tribal warfare and a nomadic lifestyle of herding cattle and hunting. In fact, one particular tactic of this cavalry was probably inspired by their nomadic ways. It was to ride on their horses, take their spear, and slice the hamstrings of their opponent. They would do this to many soldiers and would only come back around to end their lives once they had cut enough hamstrings. It is a pretty morbid thought, but it is kind of like handling cattle or hunting deer. Make sure they are unable to move and then strike hard. And these horsemen did strike hard indeed, just from the other end of the stick. Nearing the end of the Second Punic War, some of the Numidian armies turned their back on the Carthaginians. Carthage seemed to have a good hold on success, so what changed? Masinissa, a Numidian leader, together with several other Numidian armies, were tasked to pillage throughout Spain, a common task for light cavalry. But during this excursion, they saw the newly reinforced Roman army, and Masinissa quickly saw the changing power dynamic. He then opened negotiations with the Romans and returned to Africa to confer with tribal leaders and switch his allegiance to Rome. In the Battle of Zama in 202 BCE, with the newfound support from Masinissa, the Roman army was able to drive Hannibal's army from the field and establish Rome's success in the Second Punic Wars. We cannot really say that if some of the Numidian armies did not turn their backs on Carthage and help Rome instead, whether Carthage would have succeeded. But this shows that the Numidian cavalry was certainly crucial in a battle and in turning the tides of history. Gaining their loyalty was essential, even in between wars, but these battles were just a small part of the long history of cavalry warfare the Numidians took place in. They were the best at what they did, and that is why even after the Punic Wars, they were continued to be hired by other empires, even the Roman Empire, in conquering other regions. During the time of empires, cavalries were essential in warfare and it could spell the difference between victory and defeat. The Numidian cavalry was Africa's precious gift to this world of war. Whoever had their alliance was powerful. But in turn, it was important to know that their allegiance was first to themselves or who their kingdoms or fellow horsemen were associated to. Their tactics would ring throughout history and influence many cavalries that were essential in building up empires. And because of this, they really are what the Roman historian Livy described to be the best horsemen of Africa. But maybe we ought to call them as the best light cavalry in history, just because of their lasting impact. We say light cavalry since there was also the best heavy cavalry, but perhaps that is for another video. Stick around for more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history. Be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.